Hi everybody, my name is Alexis Sarkisian. I'm the head of business development in the company DS Virtual Gaming. Uh, we are the providers of virtual games, as you can guess from the name of our company, uh, and we are based in Austria. Uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about virtual games, uh, about our performance this year, about the uh, next year, uh, and of course about the uh, vertical as it is. Uh, so let me introduce you um, some presentation uh, about virtual games. So uh, I will tell you a little bit about our company. We were created in 2004, and since then we uh, have a very successful operation all over the world. Uh, we operate in different countries, in different continents, uh, and we of course operate both land-based and online uh, through different uh, um, equipment. Uh, so today we're going to discuss some subjects uh, and the topic name is Tomorrow is Now. Uh, why are we thinking about tomorrow uh, so much and why we are creating tomorrow today? Uh, we will discuss during these uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so the subjects, uh, the uh, main points of the presentation will be how did the events of 2020 affect virtual sports? Has the lack of sports affected on the development of virtual games? Could the growth of online players lead to a significant increase in interest in virtual games in the betting shops? What are the challenges faced by virtual games as a vertical in the online sector and in the betting shops? What solutions do we see for them? Which markets will be the main interest of providers in 2021? And what are the plans for virtual game providers for 2021? So the first subject is how did the event of 2020 affect virtual sports? And has the lack of sports uh, betting affected on the development of virtual games? Uh, as you already know, since March, our uh, industry is not that stable as before because we face a very difficult period of time. We have faced the lockdown in all the major countries uh, and it affected us as much as uh, to sports book providers uh, because we mostly operate in betting shops. So our most important sector uh, of operation is land based. So I have heard many uh, opinions about virtual games, many opinions about uh, sports betting, and many of them say that uh, the uh, disappearance of sports betting affected in a very positive way uh, on esports and virtual games. Today, I want to share you the statistics, the real statistics taken from our administrative panel so you can see what the real image of virtual games are and uh, you can understand what to expect from this vertical in the future uh, for betting shops and for your online operation. So let's start. I have divided this presentation in four parts. So the first part is about quarter one, which lasted from January 1 to March 31. And you can see that uh, on the 1st of January, we had the same uh, turnover than in March. What it means, we were mostly affected by the closure, by the lockdown uh, that affected all the betting shops. So we could not run away from these floods of pandemic negativity. Uh, these uh, bad uh, statistics we had during two, three months, two months, 
uh, and unfortunately uh, we could not operate land base but thank god we could uh, increase our performance for online operation so let's go to the quarter two to see what happened uh, in the period of time since April 1 to June 30. As you can see, here we have sea low statistics that comes from uh, the lockdown. Uh, and in uh, June, the situation was going better and better. Uh, in July, we already had pretty stable for performance. Here you can see the quotes of three of our operation. You can see uh, stability in the performance. And then we could break some records. So uh, in quotes of four, the activity is very stable, but here too we have some uh small effects of lockdowns in different markets as you can know right now different um, there are some markets in europe uh, that don't work for example in georgia we ca can't work uh land-based in romania we have the same situ situation in lithuania we have the same situation uh and there are many markets that are facing the second lockdown right now so our statistics can be different this statistics is up to uh the 7th of december so <laughs> you can see that this is the freshest one uh now if we turn these statistics to a diagram to see what happened during this year with virtual sports uh analyzing the quantity of bets this year in quarters you can see that um in the first quarter we accepted 26 percent of all our bets while in the second when we were affected mostly by covid we accepted only nine percent of all bets uh in the third quarter we hit the uh numbers of the first quarter and we had 33% of bets. I truly believe that in the quarter four, we will beat the results of the quarter three because we have one month um, ahead and the statistics now is that we have 32% of activity. Uh, now it would be very nice to understand could the growth of online player lead to a significant increase in inter interest uh, in virtual games in the bet shops? Uh, there are many ideas that all the players who were playing offline went to uh, the uh, online operation, to the online surface. They went to the sites, uh, but I can't share these positive ideas about these changes because we need to understand that uh, online operation and land-based operation they are different why people go to a betting shop they go there for emotions they go there for other experience uh, it's like going to casino normally people who go to casino to real casinos they don't play online because they don't get the same emotions. The same we have in the betting shops. People who go to the betting shop, they go for their entertainment. It's not only betting, it's also receiving emotions. It's also sharing emotions with their friends, with the cashier who they know for years. Uh, and with people with whom they can compete there because we need to understand that the major part of all players are uh, male and they love competition, competition between themselves. Uh, so we'll see here what happened during one year uh, in uh, uh, our operation here you can see the statistics for 20, uh, for the year 2020. 
It's an overall statistics for web and retail. So here you can see that we had a really uh, nice uh, uh, picture, really nice image. But then suddenly all the operation closed. So we were facing some lockdown. Uh, and then step by step, our performance was better and better. And we hit the record of this year. Uh, but also we had some losses because here you can see that uh, some of betting shows, some of companies were closed and we could face this uh, lockdown by ourselves. Now we will see the statistics, the same statistics for retail. You can see here that the lockdown was very terrific to us from the retail point of view. Uh, you can compare these to statistics where we had both retail and online. And now compare uh, comparing it with these statistics, we can see that we almost lost retail. We had uh, operation in a couple of countries, uh, such as Dominican Republic, such as Haiti. They were not closed, I think, uh, uh, to their measures taken on time. Uh, but still, we were losing the biggest part of our partners who were closed. Uh, if we go to our online performance, uh, the oral online performance, we can see that uh, we had ups and downs, but if we take it like it said that there were huge growth that all the players migrated from offline operation to online operation that will be a huge lie because it has nothing to do with the reality uh, players again they are different in different sectors they react differently so we'll discuss also what are the challenges faced by virtual games as a vertical in the online sector and at the betting shops? What solutions do we use uh, for them? Uh, so um, we need to, first of all, understand that for us, there are two different sectors, the online operation and the land-based operation. And the challenges we have, they are different for both sectors uh, and we need to understand them accept them differently so uh, the challenges that we have in our online operation is that we have a rivalry a competition uh, from sportsbook and casino games it comes without saying that sportsbook is the king of by gaming and casino also they uh, share these positions uh, but here we can't do anything about it because uh, uh, it refers to a player to a player choice they they make their choice so they uh, prefer mostly sportsbook uh, and we are very happy about it because uh, sportsbook is a part of our activity Later, I'll show you how we refer to sportsbook and how we refer to casino. I mean virtual games as a um, uh, vertical. So the second point here is that we have great competition among the producers of virtual games. This is true. Right now, you can see many, many providers of virtual games and uh, the content of all providers, they can be the same and they can be different. Uh, uh, our difference is that we don't use animation at all. Uh, we use only uh, real footage. So all our videos are HD recorded uh, and they have HD quality. Uh, but still, we can see in the industry that two different, three different companies, they have almost the same content. Uh, and here the question is, whose content is better? Whose algorithm is stronger? So whose game 
is more attractive to players. Uh, the third uh, point uh, is acceptance of virtual games as a vertical by the gaming industry regulators. This uh, point is very um, complicated uh, if we go from country to country. For example, uh, as I said, we don't use animation, but in some countries, I can't offer our games because the regulation requires animation there. Uh, there is a different example, for example, from Germany, uh, there we can offer our games online. We can offer virtual games online, but when based, we can't offer them. So here we have a huge gap of um, um, acceptance of our vertical by the regulators. Uh, here I need to mention that 80% of all the income from virtual games come from retail. So the retail operation is very, very important to us. Now imagine that in Germany we lose the land-based operation or all because the regulator doesn't accept this vertical. Uh, the fourth uh, cr criteria that we have is the uh, challenge of accepting quality wise, uh, versus quantity. So many providers, they think that uh, they need to give a variety of games, right? They need to give 10 games, 15 games. But in this case, what rules is the quality of the game? Uh, because there are many different types of games. Let's say they are classical games, like for example, racing games. And there are more modern games, new games, uh, like, for example, um, uh, virtual tennis or uh, virtual baseball, many other games. Uh, so if you give the best quality for your game, players will accept it. They will accept the classics. Classical games like horse racing, greyhound racing, they will always be famous, they will always be popular. So the idea here is if it's possible to give quantity with quality, but if we uh, choose between these two subjects, it's better to go with quality. From our experience, we can say that quality always wins. So let's go to the land-based uh, operations challenges. First of all, it's um, um, difficult operating conditions uh, due to, to weak internet connection and frequent power outage. Uh, we work in different markets, it goes without saying. We work in Africa, we work in Latin America, we work in Europe, uh, we work in Asia. Uh, and the conditions of operation in different continents is different, even in different markets. For example, I will tell you from our experience, uh, so it will be um, the most uh, trustworthy. Uh, we have operation in two countries. One country is Haiti. The second country is Dominican Republic, right? Uh, and uh, geographically, they are neighbor countries. But the connection, the internet connection in these two countries is different. Uh, and the power outages in these two countries are different too. For example, in Dominican Republic, we have stability. Uh, we don't have um, bridges uh, in internet connection, whilst in Haiti, we always face, face the same problems. Uh, so there are many discussions right now, and they are very, let's say, fashionable. Uh, they discuss about 5G internet, and uh, many countries already have them. Uh, since 2018, this has become one of the most um, frequent um, uh, subjects to discuss. 
Uh, and here, the interesting thing is that uh, as people who are related directly to the internet connection, I can say that in some countries, we have problems with 3D. It's not about, uh, uh, with uh, 3G, it's not about 5G. So, uh, internet connection is very important uh, in the land-based operation. And I don't say even about power outages. Of course, it's important. Uh, so the second factor here is various reason for deactivating betting shops ranging from uh, changes in regulation to pandemic. Uh, this uh, subject is very vulnerable. Uh, it can happen. It's very, very uh, uh, fragile. Uh, it can happen anytime. It's not up to us. Uh, so when we have regulation changes, um, uh, I can I can bring an example of uh, uh, Mexico, for example. Uh, there in Mexico, we can't have betting shops. Betting shops are not allowed in Mexico. Uh, one can have uh, their sports book, uh, a bet shop, uh, of with uh, virtual games only in uh, uh, land-based casinos, in the real casinos. So this. Um, a cultural um, phenomenon as betting shop doesn't exist there but before it existed uh, now we go back to the experience of Armenia uh, we had many many betting shops but now we have the change of regulation and the majority of betting shops will be closed uh, so the regulation changes this challenge is a part of our industry a part of our vertical all of us, we have to deal with these changes. And of course, uh, it's very, uh, it's a very frequent subject to discuss uh, the pandemic issues uh, that knocked our doors uh, this year. Uh, it can happen anytime. If we have this situation in 2020, I can't say that 2021 will be different because uh, in reality, we don't know. We just um, make a wish uh, for Christmas not to have the same problems next year. But what will happen uh, in 2021? Anything can happen. Maybe we'll have lockdowns. Maybe we won't be able to travel uh, one uh, more year. Maybe in in uh, april we'll see each other at sigma who knows uh if we discuss about uh we we discuss markets and analyze different markets to understand which one will be the main interest of providers in 1990 uh, in uh, 2021 uh we need to understand here different criteria that guarantee us the interest in the market. So what can be the criteria uh, to attract providers to this or that market? First of all, this is regulation and special requirements to enter the market as a provider. Uh, I can bring here the uh, example of Georgia. Uh, in this country, the regulation is stricter and stricter one of the year. Uh, and uh, we don't know how we can deal with these changes because uh, right now Georgia is facing economical crisis um, due to the pandemic. Uh, so uh, recently it was said that uh, right now uh, Bookmaker companies, there are many, many in Georgia. Let's take the most famous Ajarabad, Eurobad, Leaderbad, Crocobad, um, uh, etc. etc. Uh, they are generating more turnover and more income than banks in Georgia, which are also many. For example, the Bank of Georgia, Liberty Bank, TBC. So you can imagine the situation in the country and you can understand that here the regulators are uh, in this very fragile uh, period of time when people have lack of money, 
because of the second lockdown, they go plain because they want to earn something. So here, this line where the responsible gambling can be violated is very high. The risk is very high. Uh, so the regulators right now, they're creating more and more problems for different providers uh, not to uh, have them in their country. Uh, for example, in Georgia right now, if you, if you want to have um, uh, your games on some sites, first of all, you need to register a company as a provider in Georgia. For example, you can have the uh, have it like Evolution Gaming. Evolution Gaming is registered in Georgia. They have their office in Georgia. They have um, uh, their representatives. They have their uh, uh, their dealers here in Georgia. Uh, so this is one of the examples. EGT is already in Georgia too. Uh, and also, all these companies, they are taxpayers. And if someone wants to bring uh, equipment to have an operation here in Georgia, they need to pay 18% for this equipment from the price of the equipment. This is a tax too. So uh, the requirements of the Georgian market it's very strict uh, and sometimes uh, this particular game won't work in Georgia. The players won't accept these games. So you open the company, you bring the equipment, you pay the taxes, you hire um, uh, new people here, you hire new staff. And if this works, uh, if these games don't work, this is the waste of money. Uh, of course, uh, the second criteria is the market type. Uh, there is, as you know, monopolization and uh, uh, there are some uh, operators who want to have exclusivity for your games in their market. I don't really like monopolization. I don't really like exclusivity subjects because I think that uh, only healthy competition can bring to great result in the market. If you have monopoly in a market, the risk that you will have um, some not registered operation is very, very high. For example, this we can see in Greece. There is almost a monopolized market. This we can see in Uruguay. In a monopolized market, there can be many, many other operators who operate in the same market, but they are not taxpayers. Uh, the third criteria is development of the gambling industry in the market uh, and integration of players into the sphere. Of course, uh, players are the main targets for each provider. So if you don't have many players, if you don't have um, customers, there is no reason to enter this or that market. Uh, the fourth criteria is the development of land-based um, uh, operation. As I've already mentioned, 80% of all the income for virtual games comes from land-based operation. So if there are countries, like for example, I've already mentioned Mexico, uh, this country doesn't have, almost doesn't have land-based operation. It's not that developed, like for example, Colombia from the uh, land-based uh, point of view, or Europe, uh, or uh, Peru, uh, Nigeria, uh, Kenya, uh, Romania, Lithuania, Estonia. Uh, there is there is no sense of entering this market. And uh, of course, the fifth and the most uh, important, one of the most important criteria is market stability and economic position of the country. Uh, market stability uh, brings you players. So uh, players uh, need to have some funds for entertainment. Let's not forget that we entertain people. Uh, so. Um, 
But this entertainment is not for free. So get, uh, market stability and economic position of the country is very, very important. Uh, if I say about the uh, markets that can be uh, a very big interest for providers in 2021, first of all, from virtual games perspectives, I would mention Italy because uh, Italy gives much space uh, to the providers of virtual games and there are many players and gambling industry is very developed in the market. Uh, it will be Kenya, it will be Colombia, it will be Peru, it will be the UK, it will be Romania. These markets, they will go on uh, growing, especially mm. I would say that next year, much interest will be on Colombia because recently uh, due to uh, the pandemic um, uh, Coljuegos, the regulator of the iGaming industry in Colombia allowed to have virtual games before it, it was banned now it's allowed so many uh, providers uh, uh, are looking for opportunities to work in Colombia Especially in Colombia, there are 17 big operators, uh, so there, are, there is place for everyone. Um, if we speak about the plans uh, for 2021, uh, well, it, 2020 was a very, very difficult year for all of us. Uh, so we, we can this subject is like semi-dream, semi-reality, uh, because the reality is what our plans will be, but the dream will be if they will be successful, these plans or not. Uh, because uh, many things uh, have to see with the situation in different countries, uh, with the pandemic that is right now the ruler of the our gaming industry. So um, I can see, say, uh, I can tell about the niche of virtual games in the iGaming industry. So uh, we will figure out from here how the games can be developed in 2021, where we can go in 2021, so, and what new games you can see next year. Uh, first of all, we need to understand that um, virtual games, they have to see a lot uh, with sports betting. Uh, why? Because they are created as an alternative product for sports betting. They uh, have a tendency to get as close as possible to real sports. You can see that there are um, the virtual football, there are virtual box, virtual uh, tennis and many other games and I can say that many new games right now are um, uh, developed. Uh, the games, virtual games, they are based on statistics from previous rounds, races, matches, the same like sports betting, 100% the same. Uh, most bettors in virtual games bet on real sports. This is the fact. Nobody will be able to deny it. Uh, and in the betting shop, they go shoulder to shoulder with sports betting. You can enter any betting shop. And the variety that you will see uh, virtual games uh, next to sp uh, sports book is very, very high. In different countries, you can go to the UK, you can go to Latin America, you can go to Europe, you can go to um, Africa, everywhere is the same. Uh, in Africa, the picture is a little bit different because uh, there, there, there exist betting shops that don't have a uh, sports book, but they have virtual games. So the statistics is a bit different. Uh, but also virtual games have to see with casino. They have many common things with casino. So, for example, the final result is calculated on the basis of uh, a random number generator. 
Uh, and there is a tendency to adopt virtual games to casino realities. Uh, this is um, our reality too, uh, the reality of our company. Uh, because, for example, we have uh, virtual roulettes. Uh, you can't bring roulettes uh, to the betting shops. It's it's the real roulette because it's it's impossible. You can't bring uh, a roulette table uh, to a betting shop that is 10 square meters. But you can have virtual roulette, which is uh, great for uh, operators. And there is an um, interesting lay of operators who are, for example, national lotteries of their countries. And you can uh, imagine that their interest in uh, roulette, in virtual roulette, is higher than the interest in uh, uh, virtual football. What, why? Because their main operation is related to numbers. So lottery is a number, is a number game, and roulette game is also a number game. So the operators are different. But also there is a tendency to adopt virtual games to lottery realities. You can see many number games and they are very popular in Balkan countries. In Africa, uh, you can see uh, Kino, you can see uh, bingo type games, and they are very popular. So if we speak about the developments of the virtual games in 2021, uh, I'm pretty sure that it will go mostly to sportsbook. So um, I don't believe that uh, more casino games will be adopted to the virtual uh, games reality or that we will have new games that uh, copy sportsbook um, this will be 100% I'm pretty sure about it that we'll see new games related to sportsbook uh, so this is the end of the presentation thank you very very much for uh, your attention if you have any questions please do not hesitate to let me know. Well, I see that there are no questions. Um, well, you can have my contact data from uh, um, my colleagues from Bad Construct. Uh, if you have any, any questions about virtual games, I'll be more than happy to give you answers to your questions. Have a very, very nice evening and good luck for this year. Bye-bye.